One of the biggest talking points at the Singapore Grand Prix, particularly if you work in the design office of a Formula One team, is flexible wings. Yep, yeah, this is a topic that has been causing controversy in the sport of Formula One for at least two decades. And once again, it's back for us to discuss on a big screen. The rules of Formula One are pretty clear. You're not allowed to have movable aerodynamic devices on the car. There's all sorts of wording about wings and various other things being mounted rigidly and in a non-flexible way to the bodywork of the car. And that's pretty clear. However, the FIA have felt the need to issue something called a technical directive to all teams. And they issued this technical directive at the Dutch Grand Prix and said from the Singapore Grand Prix, some new measures and some more stringent tests would be introduced to look at various aerodynamic components of the cars. Now, what is a technical directive? Essentially, a technical directive is a private clarification of some of the technical regulations from the FIA and distributed to the teams. They're not put out in public. However, the FIA has issued a statement explaining what's contained in the technical directive, and it's a very good statement, and it can be found on the Formula One website. Now, the FIA have picked out a number of areas of the car where they feel that the teams may be doing things that they're not particularly happy with, that they're not entirely sure fall within their definition of the technical regulations. And one of the areas highlighted is where the front wing attaches to the, the nose structure of the car, the front impact structure of the car. And they believe some teams have been playing some clever games with the way the wings are constructed and the way the mounts interact with each other to allow the wings to move perhaps under a little bit of aerodynamic load. Now, Albert Fabrico is gonna take a look at the construction of the wing and how those wings are tested a little bit later. But for now, let's keep going and talking about the purpose of flexible wings and the area of the cars that they're looking at. Another area of the car that the FI are taking a look at is where the rear wing mounts to the rear impact structure or the top of the gearbox, depending on the design of the car. That's something that they've seen a few elements they're not too happy with. And they're also looking around the tips of some of the wing elements just to see how they operate under load. Now, flexible wings is something that does keep coming up in the sport of Formula One. To explain why this is, is to take a basic look at how wings function. And a racing car wings are essentially upside down aircraft wings. And when the car drives through the air, it generates a bit of downforce. But that downforce comes with a little bit of a drag penalty. So you think about a Formula One car at its top speed, 360 kph in the current generation, if you look at the records, the load across the rear wing is pretty substantial, but that rear wing, as I say, is creating aerodynamic drag, and that drag is like a parachute sh slowing the car down on the straight. So what you want that wing to do at the top speed is not exist. But as soon as the car reaches a corner, you want as much wing as possible to generate as much downforce. So over the years, what teams have tried to do is engineer the wings of the cars to essentially drop down at high speed and reduce drag, and then pop up as the car brakes and generate more downforce. It's a really complicated science to understand the flow attachment and detachment as the wing moves around. And this is something the FIA want to combat because it's not really in the spirit of the rules. Flexible wings, movable aerodynamic devices, remember, are banned. The problem is, while flexible wings are banned, flexible wings are inevitable. And anybody who flies on an aeroplane will be fully familiar with this. As you sit on the plane as you're flying through the air, you'll see the wingtips rising up as the plane flies through the air. But as soon as you land, the wings straighten out again. That's a design feature of pretty much every airliner in the world, and it's all to do with aerodynamic loading. Now, flexibility with forces is always going to happen. You'll see pretty much every car driving around the lap of every circuit, and you'll see some of the wing elements moving. That's just a characteristic of the load building up across an aerodynamic surface on a car. So the question is, the FIA accepts that some flexibility in a wing is inevitable, because unless you make your wings incredibly strong, incredibly rigid, and incredibly heavy, you're not gonna be able to get rid of all of that flexibility. It's just how that flexibility is working. So teams are now going to have to be submitting some of the details of how they construct each individual laminate section of those wings to the FIA in advance of each Grand Prix. But things will get a bit more complicated because one of the areas that teams have been really experimenting with 
is looking across the wing surface. This is an older rear wing from about 23 years ago. And what you can see here is the wing is a much simpler section. You don't have any of the complicated curves or anything like this. The section of the wing that teams are really playing with is the rear wing tips. And actually along the section here, you will find that the teams or some teams allegedly have found ways to make the tips of the wings deform while the main wing stays rigidly attached and meets all of the regulations. And this will only happen at speed. So this is something that FIA are really struggling to police. And we've seen the FIA struggle to police flexible wings more than once in the past. Turn your mind back to a few years back where we saw entire rear wing structures deforming at high speed across a number of cars. Well, that was combated where, by the FIA doing something quite simple, quite logical, and using the rear facing onboard camera, which is fitted to every single car on the grid and literally just adding a couple of brightly colored stickers to different sections of the car. These optical contacts, it's a rather boring name, will allow the FIA to take a standard measure because the section of the bodywork here, that doesn't really deform. But if this section of the bodywork starts to move too much, the FIA will notice that these spots are going down at high speed. And that will mean that the wing is flexing. They've set a tolerance in there, the teams know what it is. And if it flexes too much, the wings are legal. So the teams will do a lot of experimentation. One change for the 2023 season is they've also added these spots to the lower beam wing because they suspect that there's some games have been played with the different elements of the lower beam wings as well. So you are seeing some flexibility discussions, shall we say, filter back into the technical regulations. Now, this is an everlasting ongoing battle between the teams and the FIA. Being able to reduce drag at high speed off the rear wing by flexing your wing gives you a huge advantage if you do it right. However, being able to get generate as much downforce off the rear wing at low speed is exactly what you want that wing to be doing. That's where the teams are going. How the FIA's technical directive will combat this is quite stringent. As I say, they're going to be looking at the construction of all of the wings in great detail. They're also going to be analyzing the wings and how the wings move. That's, that's why they have these spots on the lower beam wings now. And they're also just going to be taking a much more stringent approach to testing. But Albert's going to take a more detailed look at that a little bit later on. But for now, just keep an eye on those spots and whether they move up and down the field.